Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's presentation, we are going to look at the uh, MFRS 108 accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. But in today's session, we are going to look at how to answer the uh, questions which involve final exam question. I'm picking up July 2021, set one, question four, and we're going to discuss the question and answer step by step. So let's start. Uh, you have question uh, 4A um, with a cap small letter A here. You have MFRS 108 accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and error that states that entity shall select and apply accounting policies consistently consistently, that is very important, for similar transaction, other events and condition unless um, MFRS specifically uh, requires or uh, permit categorization of items for which different policies may be appropriate. However, entities shall change accounting policy if the changes is required by the standard and also if it can result in financial statement providing reliable or more relevant information. That was what prescribed in MFRS 108, which is also equivalent to IAS 8. Um, you have the requirement there. Describe the adjustment. So the word adjustment here simply wants you to uh, give what are the accounting treatment that is prescribed um, by the MFRS 118 if entity needed to change its accounting policy and what are the uh, guideline or the rules on MFRS 108. So you can uh, recall the lecture and that was uh, where I've already explained the retrospective application is going to be applied. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in two words and this is for just two marks. We're going to, we're going to write it short and sweet. So let's see what we will do. A retrospective uh, application where first you need to mention that the changes in accounting policy shall be adjusted retrospectively. Secondly, is that you need to take the word here, which is the from the paragraph and MFRS 108, you have to go and adjust the opening balance of each affected uh, equity component for the earliest prior period presented. So the earliest prior period where the change should have taken place. And uh, the third one is that uh, the other comparative amount disclosed for each period, prior period presented if uh, assuming as if the accounting new accounting policy had always been applied for. So there should also be comparative uh, amounts between uh, last year and this year, for example. Next, we'll be looking at the second question, second part of the question, which is question 4A with a small b there. And uh, select, you are asked to select two of the following situation, only two. And um, you need to go and pick up which one uh, that indicate the changes in accounting policy. So number one, it's a change in provision. A change in provision here for obsolescence of inventories. This is not a change in accounting policies. There is a change in accounting estimates because if you can still recall uh, to identify whether there's a change in accounting policy, you need to check, check whether there is a change in recognition or a change in measurement basis, either initial measurement or subsequent measurement, or if there is any change in presentation and disclosure or disclosure. So if the answer is yes for any of this, or any one of the recognition measurement basis, or maybe uh, the presentation of the uh, items. So that is going to show you that there is a change in accounting policy. So here it does not uh, reflect this, but however, it will relate to the changes in accounting estimates since that will involve adjustment to the figure inventory. So an adjustment to the carrying amount of an inventory is a change in accounting estimate. So that is not a change in accounting policy. So we go to the second one where this one will be the change in valuation method of inventories. So valuation method is the change in measurement basis. And what you would see here is that it is changed from LIFO to 
weighted average. So it is a change in accounting policy said since it was a change in measurement. Um, next one is the decrease in the allowance for impairment of trade receivable. So the asset here was inventory, but the asset here was trade receivable that was changed due, and that would affect the uh, carrying amount of the asset. So that is not a change in accounting policy but a change in accounting estimates next one is provision for warranty that was increased normally for provision for warranty is given uh, to the uh, together with the sales that were made right so that was to provide the uh, goods with warranty and now it has increased by two percent so that would also affect the uh, the uh, uh, carrying amount of uh, the asset and and this is going to be carrying amount of a liability because the provision was increased provision is a liability uh, change in measurement basis so basically number four is not a change in uh, accounting policy was changed in accounting estimates number five change in measurement basis of investment property from cost model so it was a change in measurement basis from cost model to fair value model so that was change in subsequent measurement so this is a change in accounting policy since it was a change in subsequent measurement next we look at uh, the second part of the question question 4b which is uh, having the following circumstances to be considered this are the situation and that was for the financial statement year ending the days of april so this is the current financial year and and this is the reporting date as well so you have the three information here three circumstances and if you look at the requirement here for each of the circumstance you need to go and identify whether you need to apply the changes retrospectively application of it or is it uh, prospectively this is in terms of accounting treatment whether you should uh, 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 the application of the change should be done retrospectively or prospectively so we need to go and go do that Se second one is for you to interpret the accounting treatment for the scenario or the circumstance given and um, that is for the year and the thirtieth of april so we'll do this together these two but uh, this one will be done first a will be done separately b and c will be done together and c is for the preparation of journal entries after you have identified A and uh, A, which is either should be done retrospectively or prospectively. So let's go and look at uh, what we have to do for A, which is to decide whether retrospective or prospective adjustment must be done. So you have the year end 30th of April. The first one here decided to increase its allowance for impairment of trade receivables from 5% to 8% from total credit sale. So the total credit sale for the year was 4 million and the opening balance of the allowance for impairment was 250,000. So now the allowance for impairment will be changed from 5% to 8%. So this is a change in accounting estimates. And you uh, may have aware during lecture, change in accounting estimate is being done prospectively. So adjustment, for the change in accounting estimate is through prospective adjustment yeah? and therefore you are going to adjust in the period of change and in the future period should the change affect both but we're not going to do that into uh, explanation we just need to state prospective adjustment but the reason of course i'm putting it in the blue font there so number two six of april uh, it was identified that the acquisition of office equipment at a cost of fifty thousand. so that was acquired on first of may the acquisition yeah was mistakenly the one that was acquired here was mistakenly recorded as repair and maintenance costs. So by right, it should have been capitalized. However, it has been expensed off or treated as revenue expenditure. And as a result, uh, the expenses has been overstated here. And the company policy uh, is to depreciate the uh, uh, office equipment. Since this was recorded as an uh, expense, of course, the depreciation was also wrongly charged. So mistake is related to error and this is a prior period error because the mistake that you discovered in 2000 
uh, in April 2020 was relating to what was the error that has been there since May 2018. So that is to be adjusted retrospectively. Next is that the company decided to change the subsequent measurement, subsequent measurement of its investment property from cost model to fair value model. So this is a change in um, accounting policy and change in accounting policy has to be adjusted retrospectively. So we are going to apply retrospective adjustment for change in accounting policy. Next, we are going to look at the accounting treatment and also the uh, adjusting journal entry in the year ended uh, 2020, 30th of April. So we start with the first one, which is the uh, allowance for impairment. That is the change in accounting estimates. And we need to go and show the effect of the change in accounting estimates. So I've drawn the time diagram there, timeline for you. So you can see there are two years that I have highlighted, the prior year and the current year. The In the prior year, uh, where at the beginning of the, prior, uh, beginning of the current year, which is 1st of May 2019, the allowance for impairment of trade receivable um, have a balance of 250000 and the company decided to change the allowance from 5% to 8%, a change in accounting estimates, and that was to take effect on 30th of April 2020. So that, uh, how is the effect in terms of the accounting entry? So the impairment loss of trade receivable will have to be increased now. Uh, you are not going to be based on 5% anymore, it will be based on 8%. And since the company still adopt the percentage based on the credit sales, we will make use of the credit sales figure here. Unless the company has started using the expected credit loss um, method, which is in line with MFRS 9. Um, then you have 70,000. That is an increase from uh, 200. 50,000 and increased by 70,000. So that will be credited to the allowance for impairment. So in terms of explanation of the accounting treatment, where you need to go and state this is a change in accounting estimates. Why change in accounting estimate? Because of change from 5% to 8% in terms of allowance for impairment of trade receivable. Adjustment should be made prospectively. Prospectively mean in the year of change and in the future period uh, if that affects both. Uh, here, the allowance for impairment in the statement of financial position, which refers to the one here, you are going to deduct that against the uh, trade receivable, should be increased by 70,000. Now it will increase from 250, increase by 70, so it will be increased to 320,000. And that will also increase the impairment loss allowance, which is an expense in the SOPL by 70,000. Next, we have number question 4B2, which is uh, also going to look at the interpretation of accounting treatment and also the adjustment for journal entries. So here you have the error, prior period error, and we knew that it has to be adjusted retrospectively. So let's draw the timeline first. So I've already drawn for you here. You can see that uh, the identification of the error was on 6th of April 2020. Bear in mind the uh, acquisition of the equipment that was wrongly recorded as repair and maintenance happened on 1st of May 2018. So that was the prior year. At uh, the beginning of the current year was 1st of May 2019 and this is the current year. And uh, what happened is the year end of this company is 30th of April 2020. And the prior year error here is where office equipment that is um, supposed to be an increase to the office equipment was being treated as repair and maintenance. Increase in office equipment was treated as repair and maintenance. So that means the effect is that the retained earnings will be understated 
The accumulated depreciation will be understated as well. Why retained earnings is being understated? Because you have overstated the expense. Accumulated depreciation is being understated because depreciation was wrongly charged for two years. Uh, so for two years, depreciation has been wrongly charged. So that would also affect the accumulated depreciation. Office equipment was being understated since capital expenditure was incorrectly recognized as revenue expenditure. As a result, when you identify the error, depreciation uh, that has been provided by the company was also being wrongly charged. So what we need to do is, number one, we need to go and rectify the uh, error. How? Rectify the repair and maintenance amount on as acquisition of office equipment so we go and debit office equipment extra fifty thousand we cannot go and credit to the uh, repair maintenance but we have to go and reduce it against the retained earnings brought forward by fifty thousand due to the overstated expense i'm doing c first which is a journal entry because this is uh, easier since you know that depreciation was being, uh, sorry, the retained earnings was being understated. So we increase it by 50,000. We know that office equipment was being understated. We increase it by 50,000 as well with the repair and maintenance that has been overstated in that prior year. And the second one is to rectify the prior year depreciation that was being undercharged due to the uh, wrongly charged depreciation and also to recognize current year depreciation. It was being undercharged because the office equipment was being understated. So to rectify the one that happened in the current year, you will not debit to the depreciation account, but you will go and debit to the retained earnings with the 5,000, which re relate to the uh, uh, depreciation in year 2019. And the uh, second one is that for the current year depreciation, you will go and adjust them in the statement of profit or loss by debiting or increasing the depreciation expense with 5,000, 10% times 50,000. So the total accumulated depreciation for, for this two year, which is uh, prior year and current year, will now amount to 10,000. So that you can now write the accounting treatment. First is to state that this is a prior year error. What was the error? I have already mentioned here. And then the company should adjust retrospectively. What does it mean? It means that the company must rectify the repair and maintenance that has been overstated. How? By adding that 50,000 as office and equipment. So we have done this in journal entry here. So the one that we did in journal, we explained them in words as office equipment and at the same time we increase we are also increasing or adding back the retained earnings by 50,000 due to the prior year overstated expense so we go and add back to the retained earnings because that will happen in last year next number two is uh, to rectify the under provision of depreciation of office equipment so retained earnings we have debited so it means that we reduce the retained earnings by 5,000 with the depreciation in the prior year and the depreciation expense in the SOPL should be increased by 5,000 because of the current year depreciation expense that you are providing. And the accumulated depreciation should also be increased by 10,000 which is 5 in 2019 and 5,000 also in 2020. Next one is the last one, which is uh, the company, uh, uh, the part that we have already decided to be changed in accounting policy. And we have also uh, identified we have to do retrospective adjustment. And let's explain the accounting treatment. Since there are no information about numbers here, you just need to state the guideline or the rules under MFRS 108, which is that this is a change in accounting policy. Why? Because of the change in the subsequent measurement from cost model to fair value model. And the cumulative effect of the change is adjusted retrospectively through the opening balance of retained earnings. You will adjust the retained earnings brought forward figure if you are given the figure. And that is actually the affected equity component. So I thank you for watching. That's it. That's the end of the discussion of this uh, question. July 2021 question four set one. I'll see you and I will see you till then. Have a pleasant day ahead and assalamualaikum.